Okay, this is Dancing Rabbit, and welcome to another Weekend Pagan Perspective. This is my third try, so hopefully uh, things won't fail on me, and I won't leave out stuff because I think I already said it, but that was in the previous take. This week's topic has to do with our discovering paganism, or how we got on our particular pagan path. I want to start at the beginning with me. I grew up in a small uh, industrial town in southeast Arkansas and my parents raised me Methodist. Now back in the day Methodists were really liberal Christians. I mean you know you had Jesus and and the sheep and the shepherds but it was pretty much uh, treat your neighbor like you want to be treated and make the world a better place and all dogs go to heaven anyway. As a teenager I became born again and got involved in fundamentalist Christianity. I think mainly because it was a little scary being a teenager and I wanted somebody to tell me what I was supposed to do and how I was supposed to do it. And for someone to say, God has a wonderful plan for your life, this is it, it's pretty simple, you believe, you pray a prayer, you read your Bible, you pray frequently, and um, you know everything will work out for you. I grabbed onto that. And again, in university, I ran into some charismatic Christians, it's uh, neo-Pentecostalism, and I was drawn into their spiritual path, I think mainly because of the example that their lives seemed to show, and the fact that I was looking for the power to actually be the kind of Christian that I wanted to be. Now, after I graduated and got away from these sorts of people, uh, cognitive dissidence sort of set in. So do a Wikipedia search for cognitive dissidence and you'll know exactly what I'm talking about. The, um, they believe the entire Bible literally just didn't jive with my own personal experience and with science and with the other things that, that I knew to be so. So over time I gradually dropped parts of what I believed. Kind of like Mae West said, I was Snow White, but I drifted. So five, six years later, I was pretty much an agnostic humanist. Now, to be an agnostic humanist in small town, rural South Arkansas is a little weird because all the social stuff is at the church. So if you either don't go to church or uh, you go and kind of don't really believe, um, you miss out on meeting anybody or really doing anything fun locally. So I was getting kind of lonely. I happened to be in Greenville, Mississippi, FedExing a package, and the two clerks were bantering back and forth about church and religious stuff. One was a Unitarian, one was Church of Christ. And the Unitarian guy was saying things like, the journey's more important than the destination, uh, you know, treat people like you want to be treated, make the world a better place, be tolerant, be accepting, and I thought to myself as I was addressing the package, that sounds like what I already am. I remember that cult, the Unitarians. They're those folks that didn't believe in anything. That's kind of like me. So I found the nearest Unitarian church in Little Rock and I visited it, got some literature, started going maybe once or twice a month and discovered this was really coming home. This was who I was. It wasn't so much a conversion as a figuring it out, a kind of coming to myself, an awakening as the Buddhist would say. Uh, as I read the Unitarian Universalist World magazine, I noticed an ad for CUPS, Covenant of Unitarian Universalist Pagans, and I thought, oh hell, I thought I'd gotten away from all of this supernatural hocus pocus stuff when I left charismatic Christianity, and here they are in my nice rational Unitarian church. I need to find out more about this. So that summer I attended the Southwest Unitarian Universalist Summer Institute. It's kind of a week-long adult and, <laughs> and family uh, summer camp. There's uh, fun activities, especially in the evening, and there's workshops and meetings and worship services during the day, and you can kind of pick and choose. It's really not the uh, carrying heavy Bibles, girls on one side of the creek, boys on the other side, church camp that uh, some of you may imagine. I mean, one of the nighttime activities for the grown-ups was a tequila and toenail painting party, which was really fun. Well, anyway, I signed up for two uh, pagan workshops celebrating the cycle of the seasons and Paganism 101 and took part in a large 
Lamas ritual, and I discovered that it was not the flaky, superstitious uh, bunch that I imagined it to be. And I had a second really coming home experience. I think for me, paganism um, added that emotional, or if you will, spiritual dimension that I was lacking as a religious humanist, the emotional part of it, the ritual part of it. And that was about 20 years ago. Uh, so next um, June, I'll be celebrating my 20th anniversary as a pagan, and Feather and I will, um, well, I guess this summer is my 20th. Next year will be 21st, because uh, next summer, Feather and I celebrate our 20th wedding anniversary. It was at this same uh, UU camp that I met paganism that I also met Feather and fell madly head over heels, first sight in love with the woman, and I think she with me. So anyway, that's uh, my story, and I'm sticking to it. That's how I got into paganism. If you want to know the rest of the story, well, you know, ask, and maybe there'll be some future video, uh, you know, the next 20 years of paganism and on into the future or something. So hopefully uh, I'd better uh, sign off here before my webcam dies on me yet again and I have to start over. So till next time, uh, you all, lots and lots of peace.